FY18 budget. Um, so, so a couple things changed from last week when we met, uh, or one main thing changed is the insurance. Um, the other insurance, we got some better numbers than we'd had prior. Um, let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, basically, the other insurance increased significantly. Um, sorry. To the tune of... Maybe it wants to work. Uh, in the other insurance line, we need to cover 400, and hopefully this will pull up for you, but so 475,878, we had had 440,000, so that's a significant increase. Um, we did have a little bit of savings in the workers' comp, went down from, I think it was 155 to 136. Just want to rotate. Hmm. Where did it just go? If you want to turn your head sideways. <laughs> oh, I get it now. Um, yeah. So the the big change is um, what this what this is taking into account is trying to factor in. The um, vacant South School. So this is assuming that the vacant that the South School will become vacant on September 1st and have to be insured as such. Um, and so that that's a significant cost. When when it goes from an occupied building being occupied at 50% or more, uh, when it's 50% or less, they consider it a vacant building, I guess. In which case, your insurance premiums go up significantly. So ideally, we'll be able to get some resolution from the school committee to turn that school back sooner rather than later so we can, again, have an RFP and not have to cover it as long from the insurance standpoint, have it you know, sold off to somebody or a final resolution with it, whatever that might be, just so we're not covering it as a vacant building. Um, and then similarly with the, with the JFK, but that's not kind of factored in here because we're kind of trying to half and half hopefully you get them turned over and you might have to cover one a little bit longer I think that there's more discussion that has to happen about JFK there's some more interest in some alternative plans for that building generally speaking the South School I think most stakeholders have said selling it quickly is probably the best option but to who and what and what the final is there's still some discussion so that will have to happen but anyway so on other insurance we had a significant boost um, a big the, a, also a big part of the boost is ensuring that the brand new school, um, it, it has a significant cost, obviously, when you're adding 200,000 plus square feet of school space and fields and everything that's going to go along with that. Um, so last week you gave me a charge to try, we were balanced, and you said try and find a couple thousand more for COA maybe and see what, what that might look like. Well, I had some difficulty doing that so, since I had to find yeah, some other money. Um, the, I'm going to run down the, what the eight changes are from last week's budget to this week's budget, and then we can kind of dig into how much they were and that kind of thing. Um, there was a reduction in town reports. We were setting aside $1,000. We haven't spent $1,000 in several years. Didn't zero out the line item, but made it $250. If for some reason there's a run on printing of town reports, that's what we have reserve fund for. Um, reduced the emergency management slightly. They had, uh, had been at 1200 Reduced them to um, a thousand, I believe. Uh, yes. So they had been at twelve hundred. We didn't actually receive a budget this year. I know that there's a new emergency management director. So. Is there just a new to, Sorry to interrupt. Is there actually a new one, or I know it's going I, to be one? I think there's a new one. Was it appointed? Yeah. I just wonder if someone was appointed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we don't want to zero out that line item, but no, I, I think we can massage it a little bit. Um, some discussion I had with the Council on Aging uh, interim director was I asked the question if, <clears throat> if she could only have either the clerical hours or being open the additional three hours, she said uh, the more important thing would be the clerical hours because right now they're already established with a schedule with not being open on Friday, so everybody understands that. 
the calorical hours would be helpful. What I tried to do with this then was shift what we had budgeted um, for the additional three hours to be open into that clerical and had to give a little bit more money. What I did was got to six hours a week. She was asking for 10 hours a week for clerical. Got to six hours a week for clerical with it and obviously she could go to the senior work off program and try and find some additional help if she needs to. But that would be six hours of committed, you know, non-volunteer, you know, on a schedule kind of thing that she could work with however she did it, whether it's six every week or 12 every other week, whatever kind of works. Uh, but there's some funds available for that. Um, reduced historical, we had historically, historically had historical at, at $100. Um, last year we boosted it up to 500 because they needed um, that laptop. Um, they got that. Um, their request this year was for a lot more money, but it was a lot of it was around legal, technical stuff. If they, if they have a situation with a property that they need to investigate further, and that's, we had kind of said that was a thing for a professional technical, if and when they need that. So I reduced that back down to $100. Not major changes there. Uh, uh, changed the other insurance and changed the workers' comp to match what the, the new request is. Um, that didn't balance everything. What I did was went to the capital and um, pulling from the uh, capital stabilization fund is the 69869 a little increase from what we had last week pulling. And the logic being uh, we've got $49,869 for an ambulance payment. Uh, we know that ambulance receipts is part of this funding thing, is part of why we're having this issue this year. Not, it doesn't explain the whole thing, but there's a little piece. So part of a reason to go to stabilization is for that. And then we've got the IV pumps, which is also specifically for the ambulance. So the ambulance payment plus the IV pumps gets you to 69869 that we would pull from stabilization, backfilling for this hiccup we have with the ambulance receipts this year. That would keep the, the capital plan as was presented to us. It would keep the capital trust fund would have $332 left over after funding everything that they requested to fund this year. Um, and then on the regular budget, that gets us to a $157 surplus. So it would be $157 that right now that we would put into the stabilization fund as we typically do. That's a question. On well, one other change that I made. So that's the general fund. There's one other change that I made to the budget, which is in the sewer reserve fund. We had $75,000 set aside for sewer reserve. Uh, obviously, we know that we used all of that reserve fund this year, and we're actually going back to town meeting to use some um, retained earnings. And retained earnings now is going to be pretty light going into next year, we would anticipate. So I boosted that by 25000 just to protect us because we don't have – I don't anticipate us having a lot of retained earnings to go to if we need to. So I'd rather budget that little bit of buffer to say – if we have some pumps go bad and need some expenses. So that's, the, that's another change. Wait, that was in sewer? The sewer reserve. The sewer, okay. sewer reserve fund increased by 25,000. Go ahead. So understanding all the changes you made, we did not cut anyone's budget significantly. Certainly none of the, the um, larger budgets weren't touched in this. And you were able to manage based on what you explained and everything by increasing the stabilization, which I understand, and also increasing or is this two different things? The expenses for the um, reserve, we still only did net a couple of hundred thousand here, whatever else. We only get the six hours, but it's more than we had last week. So you're pretty much by just adjusting the budget a little bit, there's no real big hits to any individual town budget made insurance that I can see based on your explanation, which is, just want to show I'm clear on that. Yes, the only, the, only re, the, only, the, the only line items that reduced from last week were town reports, emergency management, historical. Which is what I want to talk about. We have, and workers we have $150. We'd reduce this money by $200. It seems when we give back to $150. That's just my only, it's a minor. It's a, I don't want to spend a lot of time discussing $150. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just saying, we, we, I'm just saying we, we, they were at $1,000 for a long time. They, had, just, they didn't present the budget. Just, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna make that crazy a, opposed to it, but. Make a one point and I'm done. I don't <laughs> want to discuss it either. Just saying it just, from a larger point, like, we <laughs> didn't need to. We, we, um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it was just trying to, yep. I, I didn't start there and then get there. No, was, I, you know. I was just making a point now. One, no. one proposal I did look at was sort of, uh, instead of going to the capital stabilization, wasn't across the board, pull $50 from here, $100 from there, $100 from this expense, $100, you know, so that was a scenario that I played out. And you can get there, but you start to, you're, you're chasing pennies at that yeah. point in my, in my mind, or chasing 
twenty dollars in a department, fifty dollars in a department. You kind of defeat the purpose. Our departments generally are doing a very good job at managing their expenses and returning funds that aren't needed. You know, mm -hmm. trying to hold the line there. So I don't think taking fifty dollars away from them isn't going to force them that that much more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we don't have a, an epidemic here of using that. Um, any questions on this budget? Thoughts? If we're in agreement on this budget tonight, my plan is to get it to um, Beth, who's going to do a full comb through, full, you know, line by eye, line by line, make sure that everything's matching from the salary side, from the dollar side, make sure everything adds up right, as well as making sure our page that shows the ATM budget, what actually gets shown and presented to town meeting members, matches what we're saying on the other page, and really just that, that good check so that the goal is that next Monday we would be voting our official budget, so well in time for town meeting to review it. And is that always our plan to vote it next week? That was in our calendar. That's why we're, so we're, not that's why, that's, we're not behind. Okay, good then. And that's why we're waiting until next week so that anybody that you know wanted to have that on their calendar can come and see us. But... The plan is that we wouldn't be making any changes unless really Beth said, oops, Kevin, you messed up and you got something in the wrong place. I don't anticipate that. We've been doing this process, but stuff happens. Uh, we do have one question on the H camp part of the budget. Just to, We have it set in the budget, but we have to figure out where to, uh, where, where to show it, um, where to show it and where to reflect it. So that's a, something that you'll see a change. It'll, it'll show up somewhere, but it's already factored into the numbers. As well as we said last week, we've got factored into the numbers, the potential for contracts with DPW and contracts with clerical that uh, are still open and may be settled beforehand. So we have some money set aside. Might not be enough, might be too much, but we've got best, guests at, best guesses at those. So no, no more questions on the budget, right? Nice work, Kevin. Hearing none. Thank you. It's been a team process. Uh, we don't get a nice work too. It is a team process. I was, I was. He did the heavy lifting. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, but I was, I was, I heard some, some story about it's, you know, you can. It wasn't about this, but I think it was legislation. It you can't you can't develop it by you, if you develop by committee, you end up with, you know, yeah. the camel thing. But you gotta, you know, you really gotta have, you know, small group of people or people take the ball, throw something out there, and then you then the committee chews it up and spits it out and. Um, so it's, it's worked well for us in the past, and I think that it's, there's not much. Uh, nice job, Finance Committee meeting as a whole. Yes. <laughs> we appreciate oh, your leadership, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's two warrant articles. I'm trying to find today's email so I can tell everybody what was on the agenda, if this thing wants to work. I have my phone. Um, there is two um, articles. Uh, that I would like the committee to consider putting on the, or requesting being put on the town committee warrant. So one is um, a statute, uh, Master Law Chapter 40, Subsection 5E, which establishes an unemployment trust fund. So this is a pretty basic, you accept the state statute, and then you can establish the trust fund, and then it's up to you to fund the trust fund. It's a special special purpose fund so that the money stays in the fund and it rolls year after year mm -hmm. uh, and interest stays within the fund uh, but the goal of of this is that you can establish a fund you say okay you know what what do we really need to fund for unemployment on an annual basis and you establish a percentage of the salaries or something like that and you say okay what's the total salaries in the town it's a quarter of a percent so we you know set aside a quarter percent which is roughly what we're doing today it's, it's not like this big you know, put a lot of money in there, but then the treasurer collector would be able to spend against that to pay the unemployment payments. And if you have money left over in a, in a certain year, you could build it up, and then maybe in you know a couple of years, you've got enough money built out so that it starts to become more self-sustaining. Um, Are we self-paid unemployment? Yes. Yeah, so we pay as you go. Okay. Right now, we're a complete pay as you go program, which in normal years you can see it's. We're pretty consistent in what we spend. 
Um, and that's why it, this wouldn't, what my plan with putting these isn't to fund them at all this year. It's to establish them and then that way next year part of the budget process we can fine tune what do we want to fund into the trust fund. So instead of just having a line item that would say unemployment and the treasurer collector would spend the, on the unemployment whether he needs it um, or if he has extra would get turned back. It would go into the trust fund kind of like workers comp works. It goes right into the trust fund and then it sits there when there's need for it it's paid against and if there's not immediate need it stays and it rolls over. Um, the, yep. This we thought being in time assuming we can fund it that the payroll percentage of the payroll you're talking about that we put in this un unemployment trust fund would eventually be self-sustaining so we wouldn't have this unemployment line in theory so if all of a sudden we get employment he's yeah. out of the trust fund in years instead of kicking it back to us it stays in the trust fund so it'd be quote self-sustaining and all this the right words eventually, right word? eventually you'll eventually, get your self-sustaining that you'll run 20 years i really understand yeah that. i'm just saying what the goal would be as a five for our financial point of view is in a long-term scenario we're, we're prepared for it ahead of time not saying oh all of a sudden, the budget had a bad year. We're down. We don't have to all of a sudden pay and there, for it. It's already there. And there are caps on if you – I don't have the actual statute. That's fine. They're pulling it up is hard. But there are caps on the statute, yep. you know, an X percent of your equalized property value, things like that. Okay. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's an accounting tool so that you can actually ma better manage your long-term business. Mm -hmm. um, and the second one is, is more important to us because the unemployment trust fund, we don't have, we have a couple years in really tough years where we'll have some big high numbers. Um, is the Mass General Law Chapter 40, subsection 13D, which is a compensated absences fund or sick leave buyback slash vacation. When somebody leaves us, we pay them X amount of dollars. It doesn't change anything within the contracts about how often they would be paid or how, in what format they would be paid. But what it does is it allows you to really, this is, this is the more important one, to yeah. be looking out and saying, we're putting aside money today because we're giving you a benefit. We know that you can save so many sick days. And 20 years from now, they're going to cost us money. So we're going to take a small percentage on an annual basis so that then in this, just like you do with retirement, just like we're trying to, it's going to try to do with OPEB. Uh, but by setting this up, you've got, you know, the compensated absences fund, you, within that, we would set up who specifically would be authorized to um, spend out of that fund. So part of the statute is you'll, we'll say the treasurer collector, if by default it's the town administrator, the chief executive officer of the town, if you don't say. Um, but that way it's just, you know, th that the idea is with these is you don't have to go to town meeting to say, spend for the sick leave buyback. You've got the money in the account for the sick leave buyback. If there isn't enough money, you can't overspend in the account. Um, but again, it's, it's a way to really start planning. We're going to get the OPEB review this summer, fall, whenever. It's, it's in the process. Part of that, um, this is sort of that other post-employment benefit that sort of is out there. So I'm sure it's part of that study. So we can start to really identify what's sick leave buyback, what's, you know, health and what's health care, which is a much bigger number, even though that can be a big number. And this we spend out of every year. It would also pull it out of the operating budgets so it's cleaner to admit to review departments year over year. So both of these, again, would uh, go to board of selectmen to put on a town meeting warrant just to create the ability to have the funds, not fund them. Um, and just like before, you don't have to necessarily be in support of establishing the fund, but if you could be in support of letting the, it go to town meeting. Both of those were essentially on the budget this year. It wouldn't have changed the overall look of the budget at all. Nope. It would have, but still, yeah. Will we fund in this one? Again? So we're not funding anything into them. It's just what, establishing. In the, future, in the future, it would be, so the same place where we're funding right now, okay? But in theory, instead of, like right now, we say, all right, we've got to, just take an example. We say next year we got two more people that retire. We've got to come up with, you know, X number of dollars more to pay for their sick leave buyback. Okay. So instead of just waiting until the problem happens, you could start to look and say, okay, what is, and part of that's probably going to be part of the OPEB study, okay, if we, stay, if we say 1% of all the salaries in the town, which is, I'm going to say 10 million uh, ballpark, just to say it easy, so 1% is only $100,000. If you look at sick leave buybacks, we're probably close to that number this year. So it's more, can you self-sustain and say, all right, we're going to say 1% of the, just pick a number, 1% of all the total salaries in the town, every year as part of the budget process, we're going to put into the compensated balance, compensated absence, absence fund. 
Now, part of that is going to get spent that year because we have those people that retire. But hey, if we only need 90000 that year and we put in 100000 that's the idea is now we've got that 10000 Next year, we put, it in the, put in another 1%. So if salaries went up, it's 1% of your it's, it's It's a benefit that we're giving to our employees, but we're not actually getting any, we're, we're, not, we're not covering anywhere. We're not picking it up anywhere within our budget. Not budgeted at all. Yeah. So oh, now we've got to pay, we have to find it somewhere. But it, that money goes back to the general fund as it stands today, right? Right now it goes back to the general fund. If, if well, but the problem is, but we're not, we're not even, we're not allocating for it. We're only allocating for what we, for the pay as you go, for what we actually have to pay. Yeah. We're not saying what is the long-term cost of providing this sick leave buyback. And that's part of what the, the study will be able to provide for us. I know I'm throwing it. If, you, if we're not ready. To, the reserve fund, at the yeah. end of the year, doesn't that go back into the town budget? To, to the reserve fund does, yes. This is just another reserve. No, this is this is a special purpose fund. What they call a special purpose. Fund. Couldn't we better fund it, say, from the free cash, change our free cash policy, and put a percentage into that instead? I wouldn't want. I. Yes. Because it's something we're not going to know what it is. But if we take it, if we put a percent from free cash all the time, then we're not taking it out of the budget, which is money. Ten thousand dollars sounds like a lot, but a year like, even this year, someone could use that ten thousand dollars that we have extra in there that we're just holding over. I'd be more happy if we just let this thing gradually grow and work the way we've been working, but let this grow. And put it in there as we need it for that year, but still let it grow by, by changing our free cash. Well, I, don't, I don't disagree with, with growing the base by saying, by supplement, kind of like we do with, with OPEB. I mean, this is this, a special purpose fund, OPEB, our OPEB trust fund, is also a special purpose fund. So the theory that we, we've got this, this liability out there that's big. So we're going we're gonna to continue to pay as you go by funding into that trust fund, and then the trust fund pays out. And, you know, but then also, can we supplement it additionally by saying, use some free cash to build that base because that's going to gain the interest. I'd rather, because it was in there, because in the years when we don't want to move money from the general funds there, we know we still have a base in there coming from free, if we have free cash. Right, and I think that that's, those are, I, my, my goal was establish the funds, and then we have to establish what the policies are. But it's tough to talk about the policies if you don't even have the funds. You know, so it's, the, the, my goal is FY19, and as, as we get into the FY19 budget process very early on, we figure out, all right, what is, what is the plan for these funds? How are we actually funding them? Is it a percentage of the overall salaries? And so that it, it covers us that we're going to spend 80000 in actual sick leave buyback, and we're going to put it in 85000 you know, it Or is it that you know, we say it's, it's less than that, but we'll put in more if we have to, if we don't have enough in the fund. I mean, so there's, there's, there's some discussions around how exactly do you come up with the, what the number is to put in for the compensated fund to be self-sustaining over, over you know, a 30-year period is how they typically look at this with OPEB and with retirement. This is just getting put this, this, the accounts on the books. Yeah. The empty accounts. The, the ability for us, because right now, if we, if we said, all right, we're going to set aside 100000 for sick leave buyback next year, at the end of the year, it would turn back to the general fund, whereas it wouldn't stay in that place and say, okay, this is really for uncompensated or compensated absences fund. Yes? Just a, a couple of thoughts. Um, so I think, um, well, one thing, the, the actuarial study, the traditional OPEB actuarial study would not include this, but I think it would be good, and I'm going to find out what the added cost is to include this. Um, and I think it's something that it's not like an outrageous amount of money like the OPEB is. Um, I, I wouldn't be an advocate of using free cash. I would, I would want to try to actually have it be a line item in the budget where you actually, if, if we get good data on what it's really costing us, we would have a line item potentially in next year's budget that just said, compensated absences fund, and then you would be transferring out of there to pay for when somebody is retiring to cover their sick leave buyback vacation or whatever it is. And in theory, because it isn't something that's, uh, it's not like we have a run of people retiring like in one year, it would probably balance itself out fairly well over, over time. The problem with using the free cash, then you kind of, right now you, it's being budgeted for. So if it's free cash, you kind of, 
Just put it in that, in that, if we have so much, that would be the last one on the item. Put extra funds in there, which would then save us from taking you know, could do that. budget wise. Well, That's I the think I understand year you what you're saying, that this is, a, this is a direct <coughs> slash indirect cost for each employee that you have in your own budget. So it should Not come out of that budget. Yeah, most. Right, to be, and that's just that's why it becomes a little tough because it's to varying levels. Certain like <coughs> higher days they can buy back, less days you have to be employed so many years. You know, so there's there's a little bit of when you get into the individual contracts, but if you look at you know well, be nice the to eighty twenty rule. We'd have a better idea of what we should be yeah, maybe. Exactly. I mean, it might it might be so. It'll be interesting to see you know the challenges to that type of a study. Right. Mm -hmm. With the OPEB, they're used to doing it. They know the numbers. They right. just they the just number of employees, them, what the they churn them out is. pretty easily. This, if, if they've never done one of these before, it might. Well, they'd have to just see uh, the retirement of our, the age of our employees to see who's available. What's, to them. what's, what's available, but who? Oh yeah, but the, the actual what's the average? Price, what's the average age? When will they retire? In the next one, two, three, four, five years, who's going to qualify? And what is interesting is I don't know <clears throat> if they have to retire to get that to to get the sick leave buyback. Most of them just have to leave, I think. Uh, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You left to go somewhere else. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it more. Yeah, more more challenging. <laughs> um. But anyway, so I think that, what's the? I mean, we don't have to. I would like to do it now because I'd like to get it on the books, and that way it's formally part of our process for beginning of next year. We can wait till the fall if you think that you need more time. And we, can, and we can always pull it back later. The thing is, the warrant closes on Friday. Oh. So if we don't get it, say that we want it by Friday, it's not going to make it. Well, we can always put it in the draft and then say, you know what, we no action. We'll, I say put it in the we'll draft pull it. because we're not voting on whether we want to put it on the I, see, I think it's worth putting on the warrant. So I agree that if we need to vote for that, I, I think we should have a vote for that, put on the warrant. Then next Monday, maybe so that people are able to attend or not. Mm-hmm. We can discuss a little further if we want, and then same point. We get to the town hall or something and say, you know what? We don't think everyone on the board doesn't think it's really been vetted enough. Then we can push it off. Mm -hmm. That's my summary. And we can even pull it off before, you know. I mean, if we if, if if we within the next two weeks because the warrant the warrant is closed, but that but the board of selectmen finalized the warrant and established the numbers and what's yeah. going on. We could tell them we don't want it if as yeah. long as they no, haven't printed the final warrant. Then but I'm just saying, worst comes to worst at town meeting and say. We can always say no action at town meeting. That we, we want to re revisit it. Is that is there a motion to that effect? If you if yeah. you do the sick leave buyback, does that mean whatever's in there and budgeted this year would be essentially carved out? No, because you have to specifically say that you're putting this in sort of trust fund, versus how we have it set up right now that it goes into the operating budget. And my goal, I didn't want to upset the op the uh, the budget process as we're and I just discovered these in the past week, so that's why they're new. Um, that's doing research for other things. Um, so it wouldn't move the, move the money in. Is that your, your thinking is to move the money in this year? Mm. It was a, it was a well, thought, either, but I, I thought we're thinking, kind of. Yeah. Oh, can you? You'd have to have Tom even vote it first. Or... I, I think this is just to, to establish that we want to have these type of accounts available. And then part of a project, FY19, is that next? And establish, can we fund them? How do we fund them? That's next year's budget. But we, we don't, I don't, my point is that doing it now is like, I don't want if we go into the, town, into the fall, then all of a sudden we're halfway through the budget. Pro, or whatever, just, by getting up there now, we know we have them, and we part of our budget discussions, so we're all back here next year in October, September, and we can say, okay, yeah, this is a great idea, but you know what? The budget's going to look tight again. We have them established. Let's put it on FY20. There's no rule that says we have to put money in there next year, but we can't start putting or to have a discussion until the accounts are on our book of accounts, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying put it on there. You know, it can sit there empty for two years if we can't fund it. Or find a way we want to fund it in agreement. We put little money into OPEB for a couple of years. Yeah. But what, the difference between OPEB and this is OPEB, because we do a pay as you go program on the regular health insurance, we don't have to pull from it. Yeah. Here, the idea would be at least you'd be putting in the sick leave buyback that you know that you're going to have to spend that right. year into the into this trust fund, and the trust fund would would come out of it. Kind of like workers' comp that you've got this sort of the money goes in, you might not need exactly that amount. That's what you're expecting to pay it might carry over from year to year and year. Um, is there a I like the, uh, the second one I don't like the workers comp one you don't like the compensated 
But no, he likes to compensate. Well, unemployment, I mean. You don't yeah. like the unemployment? No. It fluctuates so much year to year. That's I'd rather right. we just kept it as we have it now in the, line, in the budget as we fit. And be, but the part of it, the, the reason that it fluctuates so much is a good reason to have it. No, because, I guess, I guess because, if, no, because if, when you have a, a very tough year that you need it, that's why you have the trust fund so that you can go there and, and, and it balances it out so that you don't have to go from the operating budget and go from $100,000 or whatever we use now to saying $200,000 is going to be the operating budget. If you remember, that means you've got to cut three more people to cover for the, just for the unemployment costs that you already have. And that's, and that's where that trust fund that you've, you've got that established that, you know what, you've got the 150000 or whatever it is that's in the trust fund. You don't have to put any money aside yes. anymore until you need it. Except it's, it's nice to have it there for the end of the year when you're doing, when you're doing your transfers and you, you, got, you need a little bit of like, you need a little I like source. that flexibility in that account. Or something. I, I like flexibility. In it's not a reserve <laughs> account, fellas. It's not a reserve account. <laughs> no, no, I understand. You understand. need to have some accounts where some flexibility in it. That's true. But at the end of every year, we need to have something that we can. <coughs> okay. Then I hit that my hand size. Oh, no, we're <laughs> no, no, I understand. That. I'd, I'd rather, I like the second one. I'm all for, favorite, but I don't like the unemployment. I like the way we do the unemployment now. Cause I hate to say we're using it as a no, I know what you mean. slush fund, but. Right. I know what you meant. It's, it's a balancing mechanism. Yeah, yeah, in a sense. We've got to have them. I mean. Got to have some of those accounts. Uh, I'll tell you what, un unemployment. Salary. We we don't have much left in unemployment to balance. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's just, not, no, no, because because we've because we have because we have, because we have fine tuned. I understand yeah. that, and because we've had nice. Like to have stable. There. I understand the uh, sick leave buyback. I'm all for that, but don't get one. Well, I kind of get why you want the unemployment because again, if you're really up against the wall, that now you have to look at layoffs. Now you don't have the money in the budgets. Otherwise, you wouldn't be going to that extreme. You know, uh, yeah. So having a fund to protect you in well, the horrible years. Are we, I think just to go back, so because this is going on, with it, is that um, we, we're not voting on whether we should have the fund. We're voting to put it on the warrant. To request to have it put on. Request warrant on the warrant. Should it not be on a warrant in the in the fall? We can we can. I mean, if if the committee says you know, we're not ready but for this now, then that's just, my, my only thing is it's still in a discussion. We can have a discussion wherever else. I just. That's just, I don't want to keep pushing it off. Mm -hmm. Because the other one we do agree is good. I mean, we debated, we're debating the valid validity of each one, which is fine. Yeah. But really the vote we're doing is, should we at least put it on the warrant, maybe discuss it and let the town or us discuss it at town meeting and then vote it up or down. We're not voting it up or down tonight. Is it worth having a discussion and putting it on the warrant? Well, 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 we're never voting it up and down. Town meeting is going to vote it up and down. We give then our then we own it. I understand now, that. Whether we want to fund well, it is a different thing. Right, but, but I remember never voting these. Once it goes at war and town meeting votes it, finance committee is not voting these up and down. I understand, but we do have a vote on well, it. We do. It, it we, was we submitted by us. That's so, what we I meant by so we could say pull it. Our I, recommendation is all I meant. My point is once it's out there for a vote, they're going to make the decision whether, whether it becomes a, a tool or not. And I think it's. No, we can pull it. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we can still pull it. Once we decide to keep it there. Right. It's not even at the next vote, yes, let's have those. We don't come back here and say, no, never mind, we don't want it. It's there. That's right, but, and I, and I agree, and that's why the vote is, do we want to put on the warrant to give the town the opportunity to vote it in if they so want it? That's what we're discussing. Not what we're discussing. The other thing, too, is, is the next step would be, and not in this fiscal year, but the next step would be, say, it did get approved, then the next step would be to say, do we want to put money in it? Right. And so you'd have the line item, but then you could potentially say, I want to put money here, and I don't want to put money here. Because we don't have the money yet. But the thing is, so you, but you can't not put what you need to spend that year otherwise. So like unemployment right now, this budget is 125000 So next year, we might not put more than 125000 but you'd put in what you're expected to spend that year, just like with the compensated things. You, we know right now what the sick leave buyback is for FY18. So at minimum, if this were next year, we'd be putting in what we know which, is going to be sick leave buyback is due for that year. Which is bad because we'd be pulling it out of budgets. We're going to fill it, and then we can't take it back up. Right. That is your point. That's my point yep. with unemployment. I understand. So once it goes to the town meeting and they say yes, it's not, are we, are we not going to? Now we are going to. We put in that year's unemployment compensation in there. 
which is why I don't want it at all. Well, let me, let me, that's not the way I understood it. Well, I understand yeah, what you're in saying. Theory, because then I understand what you're saying, that we didn't have, we could put it out there and have it on the books. We didn't have to fund it that way. You don't have to. That's you don't, have, you don't have to put it into trust fund. Again, I'm always just trying to, if, if, if it's too much, I mean, I didn't say put it for a vote, we can vote it down, say don't put it on the warrant. I just remember, your points are valid, but that's not what we're discussing, we want to put it on the warrant. And I'm, I and, say and yes. my but, point is, when you put it on the warrant, once it's voted in, it's a done deal. No, I, and I understand that. I'm just, no, I'm just. And I don't want unemployment to be. No, I know, I just don't know what, so I'm. That's all. Can you, can you do me a favor then? Seriously, yeah. can you make a motion for the second one? Actually, absolutely. Can you make that motion so we get that one on the So moved. Second in on the compensation. Can we put that on the warrant, please? Amen. Sick leave by back. On the sick leave by back. Chapter 40, 13D. That's a moved. <laughs> <laughs> They're good right now. I know. I noticed. Hold on. Why is it? Because you won't. Yeah. I'm going to move this. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. All right. You want to move? So that's a motion and a second. Any more discussion on 13D, for, chapter 40, section 13D, being on the town meeting warrant? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. All right, so I will move. We don't the, have to move it. Oh, you, okay, you want to move on employment? I want to move it because I, I want to vote on it. Or do you want to hold on? My plan is to vote on it if people want to, because I'm not sure. Just to, I think we've had enough discussion. Is, is the, is the, is the consensus is to pass it, is to put on the warrant. That I think it's when you put that on the floor. I think we have to have more discussion. Okay. I, I don't think tonight's going to be We don't want to okay, that's fine. So I should take this off for votes? Well, actually, it's yes. probably a good idea to have the first one out there, have a discussion at town meeting, yeah. get an understanding yeah, of everybody. So then bring the second one in. So we're going to have to have a discussion again. That's fine. Uh, next topic, uh, Blue Hills Capital Project. I'm trying to fill in all the little holes that we get. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so Blue Hills Capital Project, they want a lot of money <laughs> on an annual basis. And they had asked us, um, as I think they're asking other towns, what is our flavor? Yeah, flavor. What's our appetite for their current project and what the cost would be to us? Um, the cost, if you remember, are somewhere in the neighborhood of Four hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand for us. For yeah. us on an annualized basis. I had some questions about their um, about the wording within the <clears throat> agreement uh, between the nine member towns, mm -hmm. and it wasn't clear what I saw within the agreement that actually it should be reset on a every on an every basis every year basis. It was pretty clear. That the wording is very clear. It says it sets it. I think it was 1987. This is what the percentage would be for the next four years. And then in four years, it should be reviewed and reset to what it was for the prior four years. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that it, then on an ongoing basis every year it does it or anything like that. It just says in four years you reset it. So it's kind of confusing there. It doesn't, it's not to our benefit necessarily. It was, I couldn't get good. Um, I asked for um, the student population by town back to 1984, which would have been before the agreement, and they had something like 1992, but not prior, and they were working on the other ones. But um, So just in terms of the questioning the percentage, because as you know, we're a very high percentage of the student population for the last four years. Don't know what it'll be in the, in the future, um, but we're getting hit significantly because they're only getting a reimbursement rate of 50%, or close to 50%. And that's because the MSBA looks at the entirety of the district and when they do their well factor and, and all of their formula based stuff. Mm -hmm. So the district gets hurt because it has, you know, a lot of affluent communities mixed in. However, the population is skewed that it's not that percentage that is the percentage of the whole. Our percentage of the whole is a lot less than 15%, but our population within the district with attending the school this year is 15%. So they don't break down the wealth calculation based on the percentage of the attendance is what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Um, but yet the cost is going to be broken down yeah. that way. Um, so we are paying a much you know, higher percent. They're not taking into account the wealth factor mm -hmm. of our town versus an Avon versus a Knollwood versus a Weston. Mm -hmm. But Weston gets factored in when they factor in what the MSBA is going to repay. Mm -hmm. um, so... Obviously, 
it's it's been a uh, Blue Hills as long as I've been on this committee very willing to present their budgets they do very well as far as I'm concerned with how they're operating their business keeping their increases year over year in line um, being transparent about their excess and deficiency and their other accounts and their other revenues and always willing to answer any questions we have um, and obviously the fact that they're rehabbing a school that's 50 plus years old instead of having to rebuild it tells you that they have maintained it and done what needs to happen uh, to maintain a facility I just don't know how we would be able to fund 450,000 to 500,000 um, dollars within the next couple of years and then on an ongoing basis um, other thoughts questions who, who approves this the, the selectmen for each town so th what will happen is in the fall they're expecting to get a letter from msba that approves their project 60 days after then they will send a letter to the member communities saying that we've been accepted for this project and we're going they're going to borrow x million dollars um, in order for them to borrow x million dollars they have to send us a, send the towns a letter the towns within 60 days either have to do nothing if they do nothing it's their their approval if their legislative body says no we don't approve if one of the nine member communities say we don't approve borrowing the money then um, they would have to go and they have to have a district-wide so all nine member communities would have to have an election to kind of like we do when we borrow money mm -hmm. that says do you approve the district to borrow X million dollars and so it would be you know all nine nine towns at the same time would have an election to approve the borrowing um, so they would have a you know to go out and ask the, the member communities I don't know if and, they and would then it, and then it doesn't matter if our town votes it down if the other eight towns have if the majority of the nine member towns then at that point so we're majority of the people the majority, majority of the, of the people people right so you get the people if Canton comes out for example it has a million people vote yes and we have 500,000 vote no their million yes is even though five a no is most of the town just want to make sure it's That's, a popular vote at that time are we sure no I thought if interesting one question. Town oh, no. said no that I thought was it. I said no I think it's a popular vote it's a popular vote that was very clear on that oh, it's a popular vote I guess my only question popular vote the whole district the whole district, district. the whole district okay. they were clear on that I'm pretty sure it was clear on that too and because it's it's it, there's two different there's two different parts. So the first part is MSBA regulations or something about the, the, the communities, one, one community voting it down. The district wide is actually state statute about, about the entirety of it. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know where this puts them. I don't know if this would reevaluate some of their project. I know that they are doing a lot to try to reduce the, the, the preliminary budget that they, they were getting in the stage they were at was 80 plus million. Their hope was that they could shave, you know, 10 plus million off of that, um, but that's still a very significant. Not, and from a finance committee, I just it's it's not fair. You've got this formula, and this and it's not their fault. It's not Blue Hill's fault. It's the way the state's doing it. For the MSBA, the quasi state, um, it's it's totally not fair, and it's not realistic to how actually the towns are paying for. It. If the towns were paying for it, all nine member towns based on that MSBA formula. Then we'd have a sort of a different discussion. We have a leg up with the MSBA now, anyways, right? Would we have some sort of connection to go yeah, in right. there and tell them? Yes, she, she has. I was actually just talking to her the other day. She's got. I don't know how much influence she can pull for us. It's very regulation driven, um, but at least she can give us the right information to know that she'll communicate with us. I'm sure. Um, other thoughts from the committee? Do we have any idea an approximate value that the um the other two schools will bring in when when we sell them um, well if if and when we sell them I know that the the appraisal I'm gonna say between the two of them and and the JFK I was looking at it today the appraisal? Uh, what the town no I'm sorry the assessed value okay. not the appraisal what the assessed value is um, the assessed value well that's what and that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. the assessed value of the land of the JFK was a million and the buildings two million I think everybody would agree that the appraisal on the building, it's not a $3 million as it sits right now. I'm sorry, it is $3 million. Any buyer that wants to come, it's $3 million. <laughs> um, cool. but, uh, but you've got that, and the, the South School is relatively the, the same. I want to say a little bit less, but I think it was, when I looked at the assessed values, were roughly between $5 million between the two buildings. 
but a lot of it's going to depend on what you want to do with those. Do we want to sell both? Uh, you know, there are other capital needs. Can you sell those? And you know, we, there's other needs from a, a, what we do with our COA. Are the library flooded again? Again yesterday. Is that the right you know facility for that long term? Our DPW needs facilities. So there's some some options. Whether it's you sell those and you take care of those other other issues, and I'm sure there are others that I'm leaving out, but other bigger capital issues. Or do you you know use one of those properties for some some different solution with those those needs? Those are those are kind of discussions I think that are happening. Um, well, I was just but, thinking it from the vantage point of if we were forced to having to do it from the vantage point of if it went to a full vote and we needed to pay it, what would be an option for where the money could come from? Couldn't use that. You can't use town 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 owned land that you sell need, needs I'm, I'm almost certain needs to go into capital. But could you not I think from her standpoint, could you consider would they not consider for our regional school district that so being that's capital? capital? Maybe. I mean, it's a school project. Yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah. I mean, you're, it's, it's facility, yeah. and we have an ownership oh, interest yeah, in it. But that's, it's 400000 over how many years? I mean, that, that's yeah, a good idea. 30 years. There. 30 years. Yeah, so that's not going to cover a whole thing. Right? It's not going to cover a whole thing, but I think to your point, no, but it's something. Point. Initially yeah, yeah. out of the gate. Right. Some people had a hope that some of that, by selling those facilities, would actually help to offset the debt that we already have for the yeah, new school. Can't do that. Yeah, so there's some I thought that was one of the the agree somewhat of an agreement or unspoken agreement that those would sell to pay down that debt there was no not necessarily but i but in theory i think that it, it wasn't it was never said or stated as far as i remember that, never that this that. is what we're going to do i think i'm sure it was i think it was mentioned hey well we're going to have these facilities we're going to be able to do something with them right that you It'll know sell them we can do something and i think there's been always theory that if you could take them and you and you sell them where you take those funds and then you can redo some of these other things pay down some debt maybe not have to go and borrow something for a yeah. project fix up a library fix up a council you know fix up the dpw that's been on our agenda for a long time it'd probably be restricted if you were to use it for the school or for even for blue hills you'd probably be restricted to principal only and you'd have to pay for the interest mm. that's a good point through operating right costs. pay down the debt the actual yeah so I guess the moral of the story here is is if that if this did pass, the town of Holbrook better t start tightening their belts. Well, yes, the town of Holbrook have to vote yes. Though. We vote no, it doesn't go. So it goes to the father. Well, no, but she said yeah, but no, but no, said, but if it went to, to uh, you were talking father down line. I'm right. sorry. Yeah, correct. Do we know what the enrollment's going to be for next year for Blue Hills already, or? It's roughly been the same mm. for like It's always years. been the same. Uh, Just with the new school, well, we it's kind of, of like you can't go back to 1984. No, we, yeah, we, we, we dropped. Yeah, we we would be down next year, too. Yeah, but it's a four-year. They only well, That's one of the reasons why four. it's, it's bad timing on all it's, fronts. It's, it's, it's actually funny. When you look back to 90, the early 90s when, you, when I got their population numbers, we're, as a percentage of our population that is there, we're pretty consistent in terms of the, the number of students versus their total population. Right. Now, our total population was bigger in the 2000s in terms of our, in the 90s, in our school district than we are today. We're pretty low from a historical standpoint. Um, and pretty low means 100 kids less than we had, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. It don't, it's not thousands of kids. But so the percentages, you're talking about percentages on really small numbers. It's, it's but, tough to manage. But the actual kids that go, I, I don't think, you're not going to see all of a sudden if we had 100, I'm making up a number, 130, 140, yeah, you're not going to have 50 kids not go. Mm -hmm. It's just not evidence of that. There, that's still a, a want, that school that education, I don't know if I'm saying, I don't want right. to, is that so, so yeah, it may go down 5 or 10. And I think a lot of stop to the Hobart Public Schools, in my opinion, credit, a lot of those people saying, I just got to get out of here. I'm going to go to Blue Hills. I think that some of that bleeding has already stopped. People we had a big spike. School. We had a big spike yeah. in population three years ago. A lot of people were just going, we I got to get out of here. We were in the 120s to 130s, or right around 130s, and then we spiked up to 150, and then we slowly we came back down, and we we're in the 130s again. I, still think, I think that other towns are going to have to, like Norway just redid, just built a new high school. I mean, they, they are under the gun for some big money um, out in that town. I think it's going to be tough for a lot of towns to, mm -hmm. to come up with the funding source to do this. 
Yeah, but Norwood's a little more affluent, aren't they? Well, they have a lot more industry. I, I, if I look, when I look around other towns, they all have, you know, we're not, I would say we're not alone in our overall budget issues year to year. Whether you have, you know, significant industry or not, whether you're, you know, an well, affluent, you know. Um, yeah, you Say just because they just more money, money, more problems. I think what, what you find in the very affluent towns is they're fine with you know raising some limits and and they have other ways to to generate revenues beyond what we do um, at this point. What's the? We still want to continue discussing this. Do you want well, me we, to we, communicate we, we, to Blue Hills? Well, they had asked us to communicate. Shouldn't we also the finance? I mean, shouldn't the selectmen? Also yeah, I need to get them to come out. Too, and then we together let them know. Um, they just want to know what we're, what we're what feeling. The, they were, they were, yeah, they were supposed to ask about the, about the finance committee. They want to know what the town would what, what, right. what, what the town would be thinking. I, I would no, like actually, to, I would actually like they, to hear what the selectmen have to say as well. Because if they were opposed, I would like to send it together as an opposition. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. But they had asked specifically for if the, fin if the finance committees of the town were not going to be supporting it, they wanted to know. Um, it's kind of not. The, yeah, I, the I, I don't. I don't disagree with you that we. That, there's no. There's no rush in doing. Yeah, this. I know. That's, we can let the board select. So, kind so of, what I was going to do is wait till town meeting got behind us and get Blue Hills to come to the board of selectmen like at a meeting right after. And we could do a joint meeting uh, and and get them to give the presentation. It's May. It's still plenty of time, you know. Uh, and. Uh, just to, so that we can get have this discussion with the, with the board of selectmen as well, because I agree they need they need to weigh in. Did the audience spend much? Don't you think you might send a letter to all the nine and only eight other towns? Two years back, when we were talking about loading down Blue Hill budget, it was going to take so many towns. They got together, all the finance committees, nine towns, got together and discussed it. And Blue Hills changed their budget procedure based on that. So maybe, you know, you should look at the, what the other eight towns feel. Remember that when the guy, when they were here from Blue Hills, they said Braintree, Randolph, and Holbrook were going to pay 60% of this new bill. What do you think the other six towns are going to feel? They're getting a deal. So if you go to a vote, you know, we go to ex an expense that we may not want to, you know, take on just because we're the only town that votes against it or whatever, and lose anyway. So, I mean, I would think that you'd want to discuss it with the other. Something this big, you know, this, this much money, you know, want to get an opinion from the other. Other towns. I mean, you take you know, West was. They're not going to turn it down. They sent three kids to school. You know, they they cut is nothing. You could be Randolph. They sent half the school was from Randolph. But they, and you're right. You know, from the West, but why? I'm going to pay another two hundred thousand for three kids. That's the other opportunity. School is fine for my three kids. I just there's the opposite. I agree to that. That's all. All right. So we we'll, right. we want to meet with Tim. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, it, it'll Hopefully be invited or something. Well, is there any money in the budget right now for this? No. For the building? No, and they don't they don't require any well, yes, there is. They're paying for the building. Well, we're don't forget, we're paying them. It's right. it's it's the money they're diverting money that normally would have gone to their capital that they're putting towards their what do you call this, the first phase? The pro uh, the, 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 uh, the first phase of the MSBA process. Yeah, 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 no, that hurts the, that hurts the, the public schools then. Because we're already essentially putting money aside. No, no, we're not putting it. No, it's no. Already, we already budgeted. The budget will be down a thousand, but some of that budget used to go to I think a, ca a certain account. They're, they're diverting the money from that account for capital for future planning, saying since it's for capital, we're gonna take all our capital and give us every year anyway, and put it towards this initial payment. So it's not changing. It's still our money, but right. it's not changing our actual. They won't. Okay. You won't. They, they would plan to borrow the money in the spring, and so you wouldn't have to pay it until 2020. 2020. 20. Yeah, FY20 is when you would actually start to see the payments the buzzer, made. So we, our first payment doesn't change uh, much. Yeah, they're using other existing revenue sources, but really if they weren't going to do the project, those would be going either to back to us or to something else. <coughs> or some other capital projects already. Right. I actually don't see how that, that 
we could pay that without another two and a half override to, to pay it. There'd be some long and hard discussions about how we proceed in the town. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I think this town would vote it down just because of, we've already got the new school. So this town would vote it down. I think any town that has a new school would probably vote it down. But would we still be able to get past some of those bigger communities that maybe don't really care as much about what happens because they don't have, may not have as many students? Well, it depends what the debt picture looks like right. too in each individual mm -hmm. town. Right. Can they take on that much more debt before they? Well, the towns don't have to take on the debt; they just take on the payment. That's the other thing: we can't even borrow. We can't borrow for the payment. Right. They say, exactly right. "Hey, if we, we have to actually right, just come still, up with it's the." It's still a big payment for, for every town to always pass it, which they probably going to the same process. Right. Just get. Do I have? We have left over. Now you're going to have what? Right, and that's what we have to say. It's so even a smaller town, even with only twenty thousand dollars, just coming right out of there. If we do that, we might as well fund the, the unemployment. I mean, that <laughs> so needs to be done. The project needs to be done. But how are we going to get paid for the question? I like that. And the question and, is, and we don't, how much are they going to pay? They're paying 20 grand. And who, and I'd go for it, too. Who's going to pay what 200 share? grand right. for three kids. I don't care how rich you are. That's yeah. good. You're still just like, why am I paying 200 grand, for example? Possibly. How does the vote get counted? Susan made an excellent point. One. <laughs> no, 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 but, but as far as when you go to these towns for popular vote, right, if we're paying 16%, does our vote wait no. at no. 16? Nope. That's the whole one point. man, one vote. One, one. And man is a generic yeah. term that means person. It's stacked okay. against yeah. you. It's, it's, really it's, stacked, it's stacked against, against you because if yeah. you use those big towns yeah. as an example, right. even if they have similar student count, it's... It's so much like Quincy, let's say. I don't know what they have. but Braintree is a better example. Yeah, Braintree is a better example because they have more, but not a whole lot more than we have right. there. But their budget is, uh, what's their budget, 80 million, 80 million? I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. But Six it's such a smaller percentage that it's, a, it's, it's less of a hurdle just by definition of the size of the towns. Not only that, but the other, uh, besides the three big ones, the rest we can look and say, this is a good deal for us. Those three towns are paying for most of it. Right. We're in. Right. So we got to hope more than one town says no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've got my. I'll be reaching out to other communities. We'll be waiting to meet with the board of selectmen. And but generally speaking, at this point, if I am asked, we're 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 going to find it very difficult to support the project at this very time. Good. At this point, yes. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Um, all right. That's everything we had on the agenda for tonight. Right. Are we so, voting on the Blue Hills or no? No. Okay. So we won't take a vote on that. No, nope. just a good discussion. We said we'd discuss it. Is that what we told them? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we said we would be discussing it before now and then. Yeah, I have we have the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, I don't have the minutes. All right, we'll, we'll do it next okay. week. <laughs> well, Mike can do that part. Um, so next week, the plan is to vote the budget. Um, hopefully at that point, we might have some town meeting warrants, at least drafts, so we can start to talk about big picture stuff, reviewing things. Will you be sending out your current budget thing to us all? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, it's and it's on the. Um, I don't, or, or is it on there? Either way, it's on the drive. It's on labeled the drive. Okay. draft four three balanced budget. So if anybody wants to look at it, anybody wants to see it. greater detail. Uh, what we do have to start working on is our report. I would ask everybody to take a look at last year's report. Mm -hmm. It's always easier to cut and paste than just update. Um, so review that. Anything, any topics that we want to make sure we're adding, let's get those uh, kind of theoretically down so we can start to. Honestly, oh, maybe the Blue Hills thing should be thrown in there. Oh, the, the, oh yeah, we always want to look at the potential I'm of saying, things thinking that are thinking on the horizon, ideas. big picture costs that are going to be coming our way. All the schools, so the Blue Hills and those two schools there. I, I know I'm just, but it's yep. up to my hands, uh, so I want to throw it out there. I said we put them on there, maybe we can get a little push. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the schools yeah, off, yeah that they're getting them off the roof. There's, the there's long-term vision for what we can do with those schools and funds from those schools. Yeah. Um, so, okay, yeah. Well, so we, we can work on some of that stuff. So. Let's try to pull some of that stuff together for next week. Do we know what the snow and ice deficit's at now? Um, I believe it's still just under 100. Okay. Um, great. And we anticipate that free cash will be able to cover, it. cover that. Um, snow and ice. Except for the year we had none, but it's been, that's pretty good for a year. Yeah. The past few years, 90. It'd be nice to have Even zero. Even last weekend? No, 90 overall for I the think year. we're 90 for the, I think we're she said 80 90 something, last 90, the, you know. I think we're under 100 still. Oh. And, and I heard them out last weekend. Just, so. well, just Santa, just Santa, Santa has a quick, 
quick run and not a lot of outside oh, contractors. Not a lot of outside like contractors. Oh. I don't know. We'll see. I don't think they came down our street. I don't think they came down. Yeah, they came down Pine. I could hear them screaming the street. I was like, no. Yeah, but you live on the main road too. So yes. They just hit the main road. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Anything else for tonight? They're starting to get restless in the back. <laughs> no. and, I, and I mean uh, Jim. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chiefs, directors, did you guys have anything for us tonight? No? Okay. Want to ask your kids? Is, no. Is hey, you kidding me? Motion. motion to adjourn. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Good night.